Three of them inadvertently broke into the core world of Earth. They were stunned by the sight before them. Giant mushrooms covering the sky. The purple infinite ocean. There were crises everywhere. Strange hovering stone stairs. Every step stimulates your central nervous system. Even the plants here are not vegetarian. So how did they get here? A few days ago Trevor found a bizarre device. Just after he pulled it out. He was struck by lightning. He kept running with the device. Lightning kept striking him. Finally, he realized it was a lightning rod. At the moment of crisis, the three of them hid in a cave. Then a thunderbolt struck. The cave entrance was blocked by falling rocks. They had no choice but to find another way out. At that moment an abyss appeared in front of the three. Sean threw the glow stick in his hand to test the depth. In three seconds the glow stick hit the ground. He used his hand to calculate that there are 200 meters here. Then the three of them climbed down. Suddenly Trevor's foot slipped and fell. He was hanging in mid-air. And his rope was still wrapped around the other two. At the critical moment Hannah cut the rope. Sean screamed out of fear. After the safety of the three came to an abandoned mine shaft so the woman took the wheel the two men were responsible for the screaming they rode the mine car like a roller coaster they flew over a fault and landed perfectly soon the trio came to a mine cave there were diamonds all over the place that's when sean heard the sound of cracking the three of them moved carefully suddenly the diamonds in their backpacks fell and hit the ground hard they just fell into the abyss <laughs> When they woke up again, they were in the center of the earth. Here live psychic fluorescent birds. Under their guidance, the three of them saw the unique beauty of the underground world. There are mountains and flowing water. The sound of birds and the smell of flowers. Is this the legendary utopia? But they didn't come here for tourism. The lonely grave and the blood red sea made them feel that the future was dark. But under the director's arrangement, they built a sailboat to sail to the boundless sea. But then something unexpected happened. Underneath the calm sea. There is a lot of danger. Suddenly an ancient piranha emerged from underwater. Sean is pounced on by the fish and pinned to the ground, rubbing him hard. The fish is obviously not a vegetarian, but Sean is not afraid. He kicked the piranha away. At that moment, there was a bigger monster in the sea. Three of them were driving on the calm sea. Then there were many piranhas. They grabbed their sticks and went to fight. But then Sean's mother calls. He answered the phone as a courtesy. Then a piranha opens its mouth. Sean was suddenly confused. In this moment of danger. And the piranha confiscated Sean's phone. Angry Sean knocked the fish out of the screen with a stick. At that moment, there were creatures in the water that looked like snakes and dragons. The good thing is that they only eat piranhas and are not interested in humans. Suddenly a hurricane started to blow at sea. Sean tried to pull the sail, but he was blown away by the wind. The two men on the boat cry out helplessly. Trevor and Hannah come to land to replenish their strength and look for Sean. That's when the giant man-eating flower came at them. Trevor grabbed a stick and yelled out, chopping off the plant's head with it. He then skewered it and then had time to make a barbecue to eat. But then he turned around and Hannah was gone. It turns out that she was caught by the plant. The cannibal flower took Trevor's weapon when he wasn't looking. Looks like it came to fight him one on one. Trevor grabs them and throws them out. He was kicking them with his feet. Finally, he pulls out their roots and easily solves the man-eating flowers. The crisis is over in an instant. Meanwhile, Sean arrives at the mysterious island. He accidentally tripped over a rock. However, the dagger in his pocket was floating in the air. And the compass in his hand keeps spinning. Yes, there's something wrong with the magnetic field here. Here the rocks are floating in mid-air, looking into the abyss beneath his feet. Sean got up the courage to jump on the first stone, and then jumped to the second stone. When he jumped to the third stone, he almost fell. But the fourth one knocked all the rocks in front of him away. The rocks behind him also left him. At this point, the boy was in a dilemma. The bird were shaking their heads, but he finally got his chance. A stone came floating towards him. He saw the right moment to jump to the stone. But before he could rejoice, he realized that something was wrong. The boy was trapped on the floating rock. Luckily for him, a rock was floating in front of him. He jumped to safety. The crisis is supposedly over. But this story cannot end here. The stone directly let him experience the 360 degree rotation. It felt that it was not enough to rotate once again. He did not know how many revolutions after he finally landed successfully. Then he came to a desolate place. The sight in front of him gave him the creeps. There was a low roar in the distance. Sean was so scared that he hid under a boulder. A sudden earthquake almost gave him a concussion. But suddenly everything was quiet again. Then something seemed to fall from the sky. He looked up. A huge dragon face looked up at him. 
he escaped the attack with a dodge. Then he got up and ran away quickly. The dinosaur felt a connection with him. He kept chasing after him. Sean dodged and jumped into the cave. Seeing the crisis coming, Sean was scared and screamed. Trevor, who was looking for him, heard the sound and grabbed a tool and hit the stone wall like crazy. He finally rescued Sean. At that moment, the big dinosaur also rushed out. The two of them led it to the mica layer. So the big dinosaur chased after them and fell straight down. And Trevor with Sean's help also finally escaped. At this point, the core of the earth is getting hotter and hotter. They had to leave immediately. Fortunately, Henna arrived in a skeleton boat. The trio paddled on to find the exit. But they soon ran into trouble again. The further they got to the front, the less water there was. And there was a downhill slope. After the descent, they fell into a crater. And so they were stuck in mid-air. And below was the hot lava. Once the volcano erupted, the three of them would be left with no bones. This is where Trevor found the rock wall was wet. There's still a lot of magnesium here. He concluded that there must be a dark river behind the wall. So he planned to use fire to blow up the wall. After several failed attempts, Hannah took out a rope and tied Trevor up and lowered him down. At this point, the volcano was about to erupt. Trevor found a dry spot. A precise throw ignited the chemical directly. Instantly water gushed out of the wall into the hot lava. The powerful blast pushed them out of the crater. They then landed in the orchard and destroyed all the grapes. They were safe. But the farmer almost had a heart attack. The boy decided to compensate the farmer. He gave the farmer a diamond. The old man then said he could let them play here as they pleased. What other adventures will they have? You can subscribe and leave a comment. See you next time.